Hi, I'm so glad that you joined me. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can add pops of color to your designer series paper using Stampin' Blends. My name is Karen Slowinski and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Northeast Ohio. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you five different ways that you can add color. So let's turn the camera around and get started. Okay, the paper that I'm going to show you is from the Love You Always Sweet and it's called True Love Designer Series Paper. And I love it, it's black and white paper, so it's classic. So this gives you a little bit better look at what the patterns are. So just about everything has a floral print on one side, followed by some sort of just plain black and white pattern on the other side. So I'm gonna be featuring this paper tonight. So the first technique I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be using some blends. And you're gonna want some scrap paper because when you color um, the paper, uh, it's going to bleed through to the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I've already started this so that you didn't have to watch me, is I have taken from this paper here, this large one, and I've cut out one of the floral images. And I cut right along the designed line. Sometimes when I cut out things, I leave um, more of an image, or excuse me, more of a white border around the image. So I have um, blends. These are the Poppy Parade. I have Granny Apple Green, and then I have the Dark Mango Melody. So it's very, very simple to color these in. I'm gonna start out with my dark one, and as soon as I get it open, I'm just gonna add some color I'm just gonna go along the lines that are already part of the design. And it doesn't have to be um, very precise because the artwork itself um, does all the work for you. So then you're just gonna blend that in. And just go right up to the edge. So you're gonna blend in that dark shading that we put on there and that looks good. So then I'm gonna take my Poppy Parade, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna add just some lines where the, the lines of the flower are, so mostly toward the center of your petals. Okay, and then we're gonna blend these out with the light. And you can see I'm not being super careful about this, I'm just trying to get a little bit of color down and then we're gonna blend it. So that looks good. I'll take my other end. And then I'm gonna just blend each one of these out. Now you can see why I already colored some of the flowers so that you didn't have to wait for me to color this all in. I love stamping blends because they are quick and easy and they really make it um, super simple to add color and you don't have to worry about lines overlapping because of the way alcohol blends work. They just kind of blend together and you don't get any harsh lines like you would with other markers. And then rub this in, we're almost done with the flower. Careful there, I don't want to get into my green leaves and then the last two petals and then I'm actually going to show you another little trick that I like to do when I have cut something right along the designed lines um, and this helps just make it look a little bit less like you've cut something out there that looks nice and then I'm going to add my mango for the center of my flowers, just to give it a little bit of color. You don't need very much. Okay, so then what I like to do is I take my Stampin' Right marker and I like to take the brush end and then I just run that right along the edge. And so that your edge is, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but your edge is black instead of white. So I already did that around the edge of that. But that's just gonna look very nice. So I'm gonna set this aside. And what I've done is taken a card base. I've just taken a card base of Whisper White, or actually now our new one um, is gonna be called Basic White. And then I have two panels. So this is from the six by six 
bright designer series paper. This is three and three quarters by five. And then I just took a little piece that's a piece that's a little bit larger in Daffodil Delight that is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And then I've mounted that. Then I have a label that I took from the Tasteful Labels and I stamped with a stamp set um, called Approaching Perfection. Now this is a stamp, that, stamp set that you can get during our celebration, which runs um, from now until the end of February. And this is a free stamp set that you can choose with a $50 purchase. So I used that and I stamped Happy Birthday. So what we're gonna do is just add some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I don't know if you knew this, but Stampin' Dimensionals come in black and white. When you order the black, they are a combo of both black, or excuse me, regular size and mini. Uh, when you order the white, they're either the regular size or they are the small ones. So I'm gonna put this right here on my card. And then this is gonna layer over here. So I just wanna put dimensionals and you can see how the ink has bled through. Um, you should expect that it's nothing um, out of the ordinary. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right over here because this is gonna lay on the label. So I'm gonna just spread that out. Just stick that down. Well, I guess it helps if you take off the backing. Oh my goodness. And there. So there we have our first technique where you are cutting a section of your DSP out and then you are coloring it. All right, the next example I have for you is where you are going to color a full panel. So this is a card I received from my best friend and one of my team members named Penny. And she has colored the entire panel with her blends. One thing that I think is so cool with this is she used the same three different colors, I believe, for her flowers. But just depending on the way that you apply them and the order, um, you can get totally different looks. So this is the second technique. This is coloring an entire panel. So the next one is called the spotlight technique. Now, if you don't want to color the entire panel, what I recommend doing is spotlighting a section. So I took this panel here, I cut out a circle from it, and then I just colored this. Because if you colored the whole thing, it might take you a while and you might not want to spend all that time. But it's so easy if you just cut out a section of it, color that, and then as you can see here, I popped it up with dimensionals. So that is the spotlight technique. The next one is called selective coloring. So here I took some of the flowers, these are the daisies, and then I just chose to color a few of them. So the whole panel is black and white, but I've just added some Daffodil Delight on that. And there is a lovely birthday card, and that is also very quick. And then the last technique is coloring the background. So here, instead of coloring the flowers, I colored the entire background. So that takes a little bit less time and it gives you a beautiful way to make those flowers just pop out at you. And then one of the things, I don't know if you can see here, but I did use my subtle embossing folder to give texture to that panel and it makes it look like it's linen. So those are your five techniques. Now I have one more card to show you. And I just wanted to say that you don't always have to use a floral image or something like this black and white pattern. Here is a card. I've used the Artistry Blooms paper. This is a really good one because many of these papers are subtle patterns that you can stamp right on it. So I stamped on my butterflies and then I colored with blends in just different sections. I didn't have to color the whole thing because of the pattern of the paper. And then I used that. So that just gives you some ideas of how you can color your DSP. You can add that pop of color um, as dramatically as you want. And there you can see the cards that I showed you. I'd like you to give this a try and then let me know which one or which style is your favorite. Thanks for watching.